hey, we're going to figure out the equation of a circle now. So this is the kind of problem where you've been presented with an equation and all the terms look really disorganized. You've got x's and y's all over the place. So what I'm going to tell you is in this video, you want to make sure that you organize the variables. You want to put the x's and the y's on one side of the equation, put all the numbers, all the constants like 4 or 10 or things like that on the other side. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to line up the x's and y's in terms of descending order. So for example, you want to have x squared as your first term, then x as your next term. And then you want to do the same thing for all of the y's. You want to have y squared, and then next to it you want to have the y term. Once you have that, you're going to probably need to complete the square. A lot of the times these problems don't include very clear numbers that go with the x's or go with the y's. And so you're going to need to complete the square in order to figure out the equation. And then you should end up with something in, in the general form of a circle. And you'll even be able to determine the center point for the circle and the radius once you have it in a nice neat form. So those are my tips for today. Enjoy the video and I'll see you afterwards. All right, what do we have here? Well, it looks like we have to determine the equation for this circle. And this doesn't look like the general form of a circle to me. I mean, God, that's terrible looking. Normally, when I look at an equation for a circle, it looks a little something like this. Here is the general form for a circle. And when I compare those two, it definitely does not look like the general form of a circle. So I'm kind of stuck here for the time being. I have got to rearrange this mess and somehow put it into this form. All right, well, I can give you the heads up that we're going to need to do some, some rearranging and definitely some completing the square. So let's get busy and see where this problem takes us. So the first step is to recopy the problem. And I like to do that because while you're recopying the problem, you're actually training your brain a little bit and making your brain more familiar with the task that you need to accomplish. So by recopying the problem, you actually become more familiar with its design and it can even give you some direction on what to do next. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this side of the equation a little bit. I have the x's normally first and then the y's come second. So let me just rearrange this a bit so that it reflects that. So I've got x squared, I've got 2x, and then I would have to have something that goes here, all right, in order to complete the square. But we'll leave that blank for the time being. I've also got a y squared on this side, and then my equal sign. All right, well, I'm going to move this 24y over here because it doesn't really belong on this side, it belongs with the other y's over there. So this becomes x squared plus 2x plus something. And then I have y squared minus 24y plus something. And that equals negative 120. All right, now here's where it gets interesting because this is where we're going to need to complete the square. In order to make an equation look like this, I need to complete the square for this part of the equation. Now, I wrote kind of small here, but this says x squared plus 2x. So what's half of 2? Good, it's 1. What's 1 squared? Good, that's 1. So I'm going to add 1 in order to complete the square of this part, which means that on the other side, I better add 1 so I don't disrupt the balance between this side of the equation and this side. All right, now I look at this, and I look at this negative 24, and I say, what's half of negative 24? Good, it's negative 12. Now, I don't know if you're up on your 12 times tables, but 12 times 12 is 144, 
and negative 12 times negative 12 is also 144. So you're going to add 144 to both sides. Now if that was a big deal, you can either sketch it out on the side and write 12 times 12. If your teacher allows you to use a calculator, great. You can figure it out using the calculator. But a lot of times in Algebra 2, teachers are reluctant to let students use calculators for certain kinds of tests. So just Follow the rules that your teacher sets. All right, so now that I've completed the square here, I've got x plus 1 quantity squared. On this side where the y's are, I have y minus 12 quantity squared. And then on this side, I just have to add all this stuff up. So I basically have 145, right, if I merge those two guys, minus 120. So 145 minus 120 is equal to 25. How about that? So the final equation for my circle is this. All right. So I completed the square for x and for y. And if you don't believe me, you can always FOIL these guys and check them out for yourself. Now, once I have the equation in general form, I know quite a bit because the general form allows me to look at specific things like the center. Center for the circle is the point h comma k. And since this is positive 1 and my general form has negative h, I have to change the sign here to get my center point. So this would be negative 1. And the k value here is going to be 12. So I know that the center for this circle exists at negative 1, 12. And if the radius is determined by this piece, which is r squared, if r squared is equal to 25, then r must be equal to 5. So I also know the radius. The radius for this circle is equal to 5. All right, now that's just a little bit of extra information. Nobody actually asked for that information. But anyways, now you have everything that you need. So if you have any further questions, watch the video again in slow motion. Pause where you need to. You might even consider solving this problem on your own, not looking at the video, and see if you can follow through all the different steps to see if you can go from the beginning part completing the square, and then finally arriving at the general form of the equation. And if you can do that successfully without looking at the video once, then you understand the process and you just need more practice to reinforce. Okay? You are reinforcing the, uh, the steps. All right, well, good luck, and I hope you do well on your next math test, and I hope this video helped you out. Okay, you just got done watching how to put an equation into circle form, okay, using vertex form for a circle. So in doing so, you followed a couple of steps. The first is you moved all the x's and the y terms to the left side. Now I just do this by convention, uh, and if you see most math books, they usually write equations in this way with x and y terms on the left and constant numbers on the right. So once you have this, you're going to arrange the terms in descending polynomial order. So you're going to organize them by degree is another way to say it. And then finally, you complete the square. And then once you complete the square, you should end up with a circle equation in vertex form, which allows you to figure out the center and the radius for that circle. All right, watch the video again if you need more, uh, more advice, more tips. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.